Okay, jumping right into the uh, landlord video series. The first thing I'd like to discuss is how realtors represent landlords in a real estate transaction. And there's a couple disclosure forms I'm going to be going over, which I will link these forms down below for you to review. The first one on here is the consumer information statement. And this form discusses relationships that realtors have with potential customers in New Jersey. And it discusses real estate relationships. And there are four ways that a realtor can represent a customer. Um, now on this form, it says buyer and seller. Those words are interchangeable on this form. Seller can become landlord, buyer can become tenant. So um, as a realtor, when I'm representing a landlord, I'm, I'm acting as a, uh, as a landlord's agent representing the landlord exclusively or as a disclosed dual agent, meaning that either I personally represent the tenant or my company also represents the tenant, at which point the brokerage represents both landlord and tenant and a disclosed dual agency situation will come into effect. Um, the other way you can represent somebody is only as a tenant's agent. Um, so that's only representing the tenant. But if I'm representing a landlord on that particular property, I couldn't act as a tenant's agent. It would be a dual agent. So another way you can represent somebody is a tenant's agent tenant's agent. And another final way would be as a transaction broker. And a, and a transaction broker doesn't have any fiduciary responsibility to either party. They just facilitate the transaction. Um, not too many uh, agents in this market are transaction brokers. Um, and I don't personally represent anything as a transaction broker. So in representing a landlord, I will be acting as a landlord's agent or a disclosed dual agent if the opportunity arises. And as I mentioned, this form will be linked down below. Um, if dual agency does come into play where the brokerage is representing both the uh, tenant and the landlord, then the landlord has to give consent to dual agency. And there's a form here called informed consent to dual agency, which I'll link below, which basically explains dual agency and goes over um, what happens during dual agency where the company is representing both parties and the landlord would have to sign this and give consent for dual agency to take place. Um, I'll link these down below. If you have any questions about these forms, feel free to uh, reach out to me. I can be reached at Walter at living on the Hudson.com or at 347-448-3766. Thank you.